What's going on guys, John here and welcome back to another tutorial episode. For this one, I'm going to show you guys on how to get your live stream set up for you guys to be good and ready to start streaming. This video is going to be quite long just because there's a lot of information I'm going to be explaining to you guys and I really think it's important for you guys to know this other than just click here, click there. This is how you set this up. Good luck. So. I'm going to be breaking this down for you guys in depth, so we're going to be here for quite a bit. So the first thing we're going to look at is on the right hand side, we have three things to look at. Live streaming, game audio, and live commentary. So a few other things I'll be touching in on as well, but I do want to bring this to your guys' attention because this is pretty much the meat of getting your stream ready to go for online. So the first things first, we're going to set up our actual stream here. So I already have it set up. I already have three of these here, so we're just going to go ahead and recreate another mixer one. So we're going to click on the add account, which is the plus button. And you can see here there's a list of different ones here. If you don't see yours here, you just go to the RTMP. You're going to grab the server link and the stream key, and that will set up your custom RTMP. So let's go ahead and click on mixer. And basically, this is going to ask you to sign in. And since I already created it, yes, I will sign into it, but it's going to basically probably not ask me to authenticate it, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm already logged in, so I didn't have to authenticate anything, but it's going to ask you approve or deny. You're going to want to hit approve, and then it's going to pretty much have it all set up for you guys right there. So now you're going to go and click on here. This is going to be your title. That's what the T stands for. Set your title up to whatever you want it to be, and then click the up arrow here and that will update the text onto mixer or whatever platform you're trying to stream on and then on the gear here is the advanced settings so you have server category and maximum resolution so for server if you click on here you'll have a list of different servers to pick from and you're going to want to find the one with the closest to you and also the smallest milliseconds so dallas is the closest to me so i'm going to click on dallas and then category we can't do anything with category so we don't have to worry about it and then for maximum resolution, now this is where it gets kind of interesting. So here's how we explain maximum resolution. This is what you're going to be able to stream with. Now, the whole entire thing with streaming is you can only use 50% or less of your actual upload speed. So for me, I have a 20 upload speed, a 200 download speed. So I can do anything from four upload and, and down. I don't go any higher than that. I mean, I can go over, but I just don't. So I'll explain why in a second. So for 360p and for 480p, if you have a two upload speed, you can only do a 1.00 Mbps. And the reason for that is because you only have two uploads. So let's say, for example, you are, you know, you're trying to stream, but someone else is trying to watch Netflix. That's a bad time to try to stream because they're trying to take some of the bandwidth to stream Netflix from their server. You're trying to take bandwidth to stream to another server. And it just, it's going to cause constant conflict between the internet. So if you have only two upload and you do the 1.0 for your stream speed, then you can do 360p or 4, uh, 480p. Now, if you have a five upload speed, you can do a 2.5 to 2.00 Mbps, and that will give you enough for the 720p. And then if you have a 5 or no, I mean, 5 could still work for this probably. But if you have a 10, this would probably be the best. Anywhere, any Anything plus 5 actually would probably be better for this. You could do the 1080p. So it's always 50% of what you're upload speed is, is what I always seemed to have found to work for me. If it's still giving you problems, you can always lower down the MBPS. And for me, I'm going to keep mine at 720p. And this is where it kind of gets a little confusing though, because like the, the maximum resolution, it's, it's a tricky thing to kind of explain. So I tried to explain it just previously uh, the best I could, but the best way to think of it is like this. If you take 50% of your upload speed and you cut it in half, and if you take another like 10% off of it, that should be good for your, <clears throat> excuse me, for your actual you know, stream speed. But kind of mess with it and see how it works. 
And then stream copy. It's a pretty neat feature. You can find out more about it on the Elgato website. But as you guys can see here, I have mine set for two. It's it, it works. And the reason for this is the reason why I have mine set to this is because you got to think about the people who are watching. Do you want to have a high crisp quality stream and not a lot of people that can watch it? Or do you want to have a good enough visual stream where many people can watch it? Depends on what you're trying to do. So with having a two for the MBPS and the MBPS is this guy right down here. If you guys are curious what I keep saying MBPS. Uh, basically, the reason why I have mine set to two is because someone who is watching on a two upload is going to be able to actually view it. If I had it set to three, then it would be really hard for them to watch. It'd be constantly buffering. It would be constantly skipping and they would just leave. If someone's watching it on mobile and they're running off, run off their data or if they run out of data, then they're running on a really slower speed, but they're still trying to watch the stream. So therefore, I'm catering to many, many people for the situation that they have in terms of the internet that they're trying to use. So that's why mine is so low and I don't really mind for it to, to not be super, super, super clear. I mean, it's not like it's like grainy pixelated pixel art type streams, but it's definitely not going to be like high quality 60 FPS, you know, high shadows, 4k quality. It's not going to be anything like that because no one can really watch that on the internet speed that we still currently have at this time. So you kind of have to cater to many of the people if you're wanting to grow a community and if you want to get more attention for people to be able to watch. So that's where you kind of got to mess with it. It's a teeter-totter, figuring out which one's going to work best for you. So that's the live streaming setting. Now for game audio, game audio is what I... I I consider game audio and live commentary that they're pretty much they need to work together. And what I mean by this is you want to have the game audio lower than the live commentary audio because you want people to be able to hear you as you are talking in the stream or as you are talking while you're recording the video. And you don't want to have the game audio being super loud to where it overpowers you when you're either being soft when you're speaking or if it's just loud moments that you can't predict and it just totally overpowers you. So you want to make sure you're adjusting that appropriately. So my rule of thumb is this. Whenever it comes to game audio, you have this green to red bar. And same thing with also the live commentary, same type of bar. So for my rule of thumb is for the game audio, it can peak just a little bit into the yellow. So it goes from the dark green to light green to a little bit of yellow. It can peak into the yellow just a little bit, but then you want to have the microphone to peak just in the middle of the yellow, or you, if you want to bring it down lower, that's fine. So then the green just peaks before it hits yellow. And then this guy goes in just as it goes into the yellow or it's still kind of middle, but you can always adjust this. And the best way to do that, is to record a session. So go into a game, go into a private lobby, and then you set up your game audio dial to how you want it to be. You go into your live commentary, go to the drop down here, select your microphone that you're going to use, and then select the dial to how you want it to be. Do not select reduce game audio because this actually I don't like. And of course, you could probably adjust the settings for this because you got it right here, the little gear for your threshold and everything. But the problem what I find with the automatic reduce the game sound is that when you reduce the game sound is it's going to kind of seem like you're hitting a button. So if someone else is talking in a party chat with you and they run off of the game audio and you have it to where you reduce the game sound as they're talking and you're talking, they're going to be reduced a lot and it's not going to be really easy for people to hear them. So I just kind of not bother with that, even though you can mess with the threshold. I just I've never really cared for that at all. You guys can mess with it and see if it works for you, but I, I think it's just too much of a headache. So for me, having the game audio at a perfect level versus the live um, versus having to mess with that whole threshold thing works better for me. But as I was saying, though, once you have your game audio dial set the way you want it, you select your microphone, you have that dial the way you want it, and everything's good there, 
then what you're going to want to do is select the commentary button down here on the bottom right hand corner and then go and record a session and you're going to do this recording the sessions and talking as if you are doing a live commentary as you're playing so if you are playing call of duty and you're in a private lobby by yourself with a time limit where it's just it's there is no time limit basically you just go in there and you fire a bunch of weapons as if it was a real thing you were doing for live stream or for a video or whatnot and just listen as you go and play the playback of what you recorded and see what needs to be adjusted make the adjustment and do it again over and over and over until you get the setting that you want once you get the setting you want then you can keep how it is and then we can move on to the next area so once you have all of this pretty much squared away perfect the next thing you're want to going to do is go up to the very top here it's going to say game capture hd preferences at the very very top on the right hand side of edit click on that go to the advanced tab and if you have a dedicated graphics card, you can stream by using the actual decoder and encoder can be from your graphics card. Now, if you don't have this, it's probably going to be set to software built in, which is fine. You'll still get a great stream regardless. So I just want to show this option to you and then you can mess with the setting dial here. If you want best performance versus highest quality or if you want highest quality versus best performance. So it's really entirely up to you, uh, but that's definitely something for you guys to take a look into, test, and see how it works for you. So once you have those four things cleared away, then if you guys haven't had a chance to check out the other tutorial episodes, actually go on how you can create your overlay and get all your scenes and getting your alerts and everything to pop up on here, Definitely go ahead and check out that video because once you guys get that squared away, then you are really all set to go. Now, whatever you do, whether you're streaming or if you're recording, all the settings that I just showed you minus the live streaming is going to help you regardless if you're doing the recording or if you're doing the streaming. Now, of course, you are still going to want to make sure that you have your actual settings good too, which should be in this one right here on your capturing device so on the picture tab for your game capture HD 60 settings you want to make sure you have these adjusted too to make sure you're getting good saturations good brightness and contrast that way everything looks how you want it to when you're doing your stream or when you're doing your recording so once you have all of that you guys are all set to go so you get everything tested everything's good you're going to go down here to the stream button. Now you guys can see I'm streaming at 2 Mbps at 720p and then 30 frames per second. Now why am I doing it at 30 frames per second? Because of the fact of if you try to do 60 frames per second for a stream, it's going to cost more on your bandwidth, which is your internet speed, and it's also going to be a lot harder for people to watch it. So that is why I have it at 30 frames per second. So here is one of the biggest selling points for me on Elgato software is the fact of this. When you're streaming and you're getting, you know, it's encoded the way that you have it set up. And even though it may be looking kind of grainy to you and you're not happy with it, but it's something that you are able to work with. But you don't want to upload something like that. Right. You, if you don't if you don't want to upload your video on demand, whether you're on Mixer or Twitch or, or YouTube, you don't want those. But you want to have a higher quality one being uploaded onto YouTube or wherever you upload any of your videos. This is the next thing I'm about to talk about is by far one of the awesome things I've ever seen. And it's it's been a while. Since, I mean, there, you could probably do this on some of the other ones, but I've never actually been able to get it to look this good. So what I'm talking about is when you're streaming and you're recording at the same time, you're not, you're, you're not getting the, the encoded version. You're getting the 1080p 60 FPS version. So what do I mean by this? Okay. So I say I'm streaming, I click the record button and it records everything in 1080p 60 FPS with the game audio settings, with the live commentary settings, because I have the live commentary button pushed in, and then I'll have all my overlay information up here, like if I have alerts or if I have my webcam, 
or the overlay or any other type of scenes that I adjust down here, all of that gets recorded in 1080p 60 frames per second. And that is something that I can then upload onto YouTube or wherever else I would want to go and put any of my videos. Now, I do know that there are some software out there that do this too, but they're so complicated. This, you already have everything set up. It's all in one unit. It's really easy to get everything set up. And then all you got to do is hit that record button. And then the capture card pretty much does the rest. So this is more easy for you guys than to have to deal with it in another platform or another software. So I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm just like, I'm, I'm in awe right now on how awesome that is. So go ahead, guys, mess with the settings. See how it works for you. And if you have any questions, if you're running into any problems, if you need more clarification on anything, let me know in the comment section below. Reach out to me on Twitter. You can also send me an email. You can talk to me in my Discord. I'm here to help you guys out as much as possible. But anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you check out the other tutorials on the channel, other tutorials for Elgato on the channel. And if there's something that I haven't covered that you guys have questions on and it may even be worthy of a video, let me know and I'll go ahead and I'll see if I can get that squared away for you guys to make it more informative and more visually um, easy for you guys to follow along. But thank you very much for watching the video. I appreciate your time. You guys have a good rest of your day. And as always, keep being awesome and have fun streaming and making content. Take care, guys.